Periscope. Now, as promised, the tale of O.J. Before we talk about this O.J. confession, the so-called O.J. confession, and then his response to the so-called confession, I'll tell you my perspective on O.J. I'm 38 years old, so I was around 14 or 15 when all the O.J. shit went down. Now, before O.J. was accused of double murder, to, to backtrack all the way to the beginning, O.J. Simpson was one of the most well was one of the most well liked people in the world, especially in the United States. He was a football star, a football hero, great guy. He was in he was funny in the uh, Naked Gun movies. He was the Hertz car rental guy where he would jump over stuff trying to get to his his uh, his his flight or whatever. O.J. Simpson was the type of black guy that could walk into the middle of a Ku Klux Klan rally and all the dumb racists would be like holy shit it's oj simpson i fucking love you oj can i have your autograph would you like my seat to enjoy the festivities what can we do to make you more comfortable oj everybody fucking loved oj simpson in 1993 everybody loved oj simpson he was the most popular person ever everybody loved oj simpson as i've said many times so he established that so june of 1994 I remember watching, it was a headline news. Cable was still kind of a new thing. There wasn't, there was like 20 or 30 channels. I don't know how many. He, a CNN headline news uh, has a breaking news story that O.J. Simpson's ex-wife was murdered in Los Angeles. And I remember telling my dad, I think, that was, that's weird, you know, O.J.'s wife. So then, of course, a couple days later, O.J.'s uh, accused of murder He's in the Bronco. They break into the NBA playoff game. I believe it was the next game I was watching. The slow chase, the slow OJ chase in the white Bronco with Al Collins driving. And then the trial. The trial of OJ. The dream team. OJ lines up Johnny Cochran, Robert Shapiro, F. Lee Bailey, Alan Dershowitz, tons of Kardashian dude, um, all those people. Greatest amalgamation of lawyers ever. And then the trial. The trial of O.J. Simpson was nine months long. And when I tell you, those of you who remember, if you're a little, you can be, this was a little bit later, if you're a little bit younger, you may remember the news covers that 9-11 got. You have that, you know that picture in your mind. I have to explain that. The amount of news covers that the 9-11 attacks on New York and Washington, D.C. and the field of Pennsylvania, the, the news coverage those got, I would not be exaggerating to say that O.J. Simpson got the same level of news coverage. O.J. Simpson's trial got the same level of news coverage as 9-11. Now, again, cable was very new. Uh, there was no Internet, really. I think AOL was in the early stages of their shit, and there was chat rooms and message boards and stuff. But not many people were on the Internet. So it was newspapers, radio, broadcast television, and cable TV, which is about, like I said, 20 or 30 channels, whatever it was. There was CNN, ESPN, shit like that, CNN headline news, in the early days of, of cable channels, the re relatively early. The coverage of O.J. Simpson's trial was wall to wall. All the broadcast uh, networks preempted all their, day, their uh, soap operas and daytime game shows and played the O.J. trial. Court TV got its start playing the O.J. trial. Uh, Fox News, CNN, I don't remember if MSNBC was around back then, they might have been, all played the entirety of the OJ trial. Radio stations, you could get five or six, and I'm, I live in Cincinnati, uh, the Cincinnati area, um, you can get fucking uh, five or six different radio stations playing the audio of the OJ trial. Every newspaper, every magazine, every cable channel, just about, especially if they covered news or sports. Every single media outlet covered the OJ Simpson trial Start to finish, wall to wall, whatever you want to call it. Nine months of nothing but constant OJ coverage. And in the end, of course, as everyone knows, he was found not guilty, despite the fact that there seemed to be a lot of evidence pointing to his guilt. A lot of blood at his house, the bloody glove at his house, DNA, uh, you know, at the scene, his DNA or whatever not. And then, you know, it's just... <clears throat> I could go, you know, I could do an hour on, you know, the trial and, and what happened and all that shit. But what is also easy, well, something to remember, is at the time, the way everyone was, <coughs> excuse me, was divided along racial lines. Like 95% of white people thought he was guilty and 95% of black people thought he didn't do it. 
and there was a lot of doubt. And then Mark Furman apparently liked to uh, throw the word nigger around a lot on recordings. So that uh, cast reasonable doubt. And in the end, the jury said O.J. was not guilty. He was found guilty in a civil trial. And, you know, like, you know, you, as you know, years later, he was a, uh, charged with armed robbery for stealing back memorabilia that someone had stole from him and did time in prison. And now he's out. Anyway. Brings us to last Sunday. Fox plays this interview from OJ uh, that OJ did back in 2006 with Judith Regan, who's a, a book publisher, Simon & Schuster, or was back in the day. She published Rush Ball's book and Howard Stern's books. In any case, OJ wrote a book back then called If I Did It, which I guess was a hypothetical way that if he did do this murder, that this is how he would, it would have went down. Which is weird in itself. It's fucking weird. If you didn't kill someone to do a book on hypothetically how you would have done it or could have done it, that's just weird all the way around. So anyway, he's doing the I'm this he's doing the hypothetical thing during this interview. And he's going into great detail. And at some point, you know, he stops reiterating that it's hypothetical and he's just giving this like really deep detail on, you know, if he did this crime, this double murder. This is how it would have went down. And uh, Fox played it last Sunday, so it's beginning, you know, it's went viral, obviously, because it's fucking OJ. And people still, you know, want to know about OJ. And it's just, it's just weird. It's very weird and it's very creepy. So we're going to check out this video and then we'll uh, check out OJ's response to Fox running the interview. This newly released OJ Simpson interview was first taped in 2006 to promote his controversial book, If I Did It. The interview aired overnight, and we see Simpson discussing in some chilling detail how the murders might have gone down. ABC's Adrian Banker is here with the story. Good morning, Adrian. Good morning to you too, George. It's the newest take in a story that continues to resurface, but the interview has people wondering, was this long lost tape a real murder confession from OJ Simpson? I know the facts better than anyone. The question still being asked nearly 25 years later. Did O.J. Simpson commit murder? I don't think any two people could be um, murdered the way they were without everybody being covered in blood. Simpson speaks about the 1994 murders of former wife Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman as if he were there. Why don't you tell me? What might have happened on the night of June 12th, 1994? First of all, it's, this is very difficult for me to do this. Uh, it was very difficult for me because it's hypothetical. The 2006 interview, part of a two... Yes, again, he reiterates many, many times that it's hypothetical. But why do it? Why write the book and then why do an interview to where you're talking about how you would have killed them if you killed them? Is it arrogance? Does he think that it's going to make people like him again? They're going to love OJ again because this is how he would have uh, tried to chop off his ex-wife's head with a knife. It's, it's all very weird. Very weird. Our special on Fox titled OJ Simpson, The Lost Confession. He speaks candidly about his book, If I Did It, a fictionalized hypothetical confession to the murders he was acquitted of in the now historic blockbuster trial. Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. It's a fantastic idea. Fantastic. I'm acquitted of these murders, but let me write a fictionalized account of how I would have killed those motherfuckers if I had the chance and if I, if I did it. Some of his answers, chilling. You put on a wool cap and gloves. Uh, in the hypothetical, I put on a cap and gloves. Simpson says for the first time, he was accompanied by a friend named Charlie in his so-called hypothetical retelling. I always kept a knife in that car for the crazies and stuff. So, in his hypothetical, he's got someone with him. He's conjured a friend in the hypothetical. And he's got a knife because people are crazy. And as he says, you know, you can't, you can't carry guns. You can't travel with a gun. And I remember Charlie saying, you ain't bringing that. And I didn't, right? But I believe. Charlie was like, OJ, don't kill this bitch. And I was like, Charlie, shut the fuck up, man. I got some problems that I'm working out here. Go wait in the fucking Bronco. He, he took it. Charlie took the knife? Yeah. In the book. OJ. In the book, Charlie, who does not exist. Hypothetical guy, Charlie, does not exist, exist, he took the knife. Calls exchanging words with Ron Goldman, who had shown up at his ex-wife's... Hypothetically, I was like, Ron Goldman, you here to fuck my bitch? Step up, dog. 
Step up. Home. I just remember Nicole fell and hurt herself. And uh, this guy kind of got into a karate thing. So basically, here he's, he stops saying, you know, it's hypothetical, it's hypothetical. He starts saying, you know, I did this and this happened and this happened. So really, it's just an audio clip of him talking about the brutal double murder of his ex-wife and her friend, which is as creepy as it gets. And I said, well, you think you can kick my ass? And I remember I grabbed a knife. I'm O.J. Simpson, motherfucker. You better step off. I will fucking, I will double murder the fuck out of you. I do remember that portion, taking a knife from Charlie. And to be honest, after that, I don't remember. Except I'm standing there and there's all kind of stuff around. And He's like, I don't remember. I, I lost the memory of it. Hypothetically. Allegedly. Of course. And, um, um. What kind of stuff? Charlie. Charlie fucked up. Charlie's supposed to be there to help. Charlie didn't help shit. But, and stuff around. You know, we, you know, I hate to say this, but this is like, but I'm right, sorry. Right. I know we got to back up again. Right. <laughs> you write a. What? What the fuck is he laughing about? What is so goddamn funny? I guess something, maybe something Charlie said. I don't know. He's like, yeah, oh man, Charlie, we were coming home from this fucking murder. I was covered in blood. And Charlie told this fucking joke. I was like, oh, Charlie, nah, man. You're too much, Charlie. You're too much. About removing a glove before taking the knife from Charlie. Uh, you know, I had no conscious uh, memory of doing that, but... Why isn't Charlie in prison? Where's Charlie? Obviously, I must have because they found the glove there. Charlie the interview didn't... Yeah, they did. They found a glove at OJ's house. Bloody glove. Originally aired due to public Bloody backlash. Glove. In the book, you described taking off your shoes, your pants, and your shirt and dropping it in a bundle. Do you remember that? Uh, yes. Social media erupting overnight. One viewer writes, yes, this is a confession to murder. Another tweeting, OJ has details and speaks in first person more often than not. His lawyer tells ABC News a lot. He's got Charlie. He's got fucking Charlie. A lot of people think OJ Simpson is still actively involved in this. He's not and wants nothing to do with this in 2018. Now, the executive producer of the special says the families of the victims gave their blessing to show the interview. You might recall a judge ruled the rights of Simpson's book go to the family of Ron Goldman. But obviously still a ton of interest in this story. Mm. That's hard to watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not hard to watch. It's disconcerting. That's for sure. There's definitely no doubt about that. It's, uh, it's some weird shit. Now, as you, they talked about a little bit there at the end, OJ did respond to his quote unquote confession. And to be fair, he kept saying, you know, it's hypothetical, but again, you can also see how it comes across as really, really fucking creepy. Anyway, stories from TMZ sports it says, if I did it was not a confession. Well, obviously it would just, the name of the book would have just been, I did it. O.J. Simpson insists his If I Did a TV special was not a confession of murder and says the people on the show were all a bunch of haters. <laughs> I'm describing this fucking double murder and killing this bitch and they all hating on me. Simpson gave his first sit-down interview since leaving prison to the Buffalo News and gave his own take on O.J. Simpson, The Lost Confession. When people want to make money or get ratings, they're going to pimp me. I'm going to get pimped. Simpson says his friends... And been teasing him about the show and whether or not it was a real confession. Really? His friends? His friend Charlie? They've been teasing him? Teasing the juice? Hey, 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 did you really kill that bitch or what? Oh, I'm just joshing you, bro. Just, just joshing you. <laughs> Listen, if I confessed 12 years ago, you would have heard about it 12 years ago. When asked if you watched the Fox special, Simpson replied, I watched nothing of me. I didn't watch the Fox special because I knew they were all haters and people will say that things are just not true and there's nobody there to challenge them. And that would piss me off. Oh, you don't want to piss OJ off. He will fuck you up. That's right. To the, almost to the back, almost decapitation. He says, so why watch it? It's a beautiful day. I'm about to go play golf. Why should I have some crap in my mind? You've got to let it go. It's so true. It's so true. When you double murder people, and people still want to be hating on you years later about it. 
You just got to move on. Go play some golf. It's a tough, it's a tough gig for OJ. He's having a tough time.